Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another check-in on the Ouya. We've got a few games to look at. I mean, games are coming out all the time on the Ouya, but we have to decide what are the ones that are worth our time. What, Which of the Ouya gems are the ones we should be looking at? Well, I don't think it... Uh, I think it goes without saying that when there's a new 3T game released on the Ouya, that that is what our attention must turn to. So we're starting off with Andros in Time, a game that has maybe kind of a familiar theme song. And on second thought, maybe not. I thought for a second maybe I heard that somewhere before, but probably not. Let's start Andros in Time. Alright, here we are. We're Andros. Here's our, like, our, our time box, whatever such a thing might be called, I'm not sure. We are landed on, down at Dallas Brook, and we have to get these colorful things, and we have to not be touched by any of the wildlife, like the birds, or the blue, or the blue heads, because they will kill us. We die instantly upon their touch. I don't know if that means that Andros is really fragile, or is it just that everything on this planet just just kills stuff by touching them. Because if that's the case, you'd think that's a, that'd be a pretty lonely existence. But Andros has no time to sympathize with these creatures. Andros has to get his colorful things back, which I assume he needs to use to power his time box so he can leave and go somewhere else and have adventures with companions or something? Maybe, I don't know. Here's penguins. The penguins will also kill us upon touching. I mean, this is kind of odd. I mean, like, we have this ice cavern right outside that more tropical-looking area. So, like, a, a variety of environments found on this strange world. Of course, this game follows the model that 3T games love so much. You have these single screen... I was about to say side-scrolling, but it really isn't side-scrolling. Nothing is scrolling, it's just single screen areas that uh, we control a character as we jump around on platforms trying to get things while other things will try to kill us. And of course, in true 3T Games fashion, the art style doesn't really match up with everything that's on the screen. Like, the main character, I can assume 3T Games actually drew that, but everything else, like the these platforms and that water... I'm gonna guess they probably didn't. I'm gonna guess they, that came from somewhere else. As is common for 3T Games. Well, I mean, you, you do what you have to do, I guess. When you're pumping out as many prime platformers, polished gems, as 3T games do, you need to get your assets wherever you can. Like this one penguin that is slowly levitating up and down with its eye flashing ominously. I, I, got, I have to get seven more colorful things. I have almost all the colorful things. I mean, I assume that the character we're playing is Andros. We were not formally introduced. Oh, there's a black cat walking back and forth. It may look cute, but it will, yes, it will kill us right there. Even the cat. Even the cat. We go underground and, oh, no spider. Oh, we're in Shelob's lair. Well, Shelob will not be, be no match for Andros's agility in getting the colorful things. And now we're gonna have to climb Jacob's ladder. That seems like very shallow water for a shark, but I mean, I don't know how the, uh, how the ecosystem on this planet works. It's all a mystery to me, and Andros. Oh. That yellow thing at the bottom can kill us. Yes, everything in this game can kill us, even the floors. Alright, we have to get into the pterodactyl nest to get the things. We got all the things. All of the things have been gotten. And now we have to go to exit, which I might assume is our time box. 
what, whatever you might call something like that. Yep, there it is. It's open and it's flashing. We have all the colorful things. We did it. We escaped in the time box and we leave for another adventure at the Roman fort. And look at these Romans. Look how fast they're moving. They're all over the place. These Romans are energetic. They've had their coffee in the morning and they're ready to go. But Andros, is he ready to go? Well, only if you are. Because if you want to see Andros's further adventures in time, you have to get this game on the Ouya. And I know that you have an Ouya. I don't even need to ask that. We all have an Ouya. It's a best-selling system. Beloved across the video gaming world. So get on your Ouya right now. Get on the store and, and get Andros in time and guide Andros to get all of his colorful things, and then maybe he will save time? Maybe that's what this is about, I'm not sure. But it's on the Ouya. For 3T Games. Next up, we have to ask ourselves the question, Where am I? Well, we're not gonna find out here, because, uh... You know, I like horror games. You know that about me. Uh, and I will give horror games a chance, because I, I, I want to like them. Where Am I is something that I think maybe uh, shouldn't have been released in the state that it's in, maybe? I don't know. Uh, the way it plays, it's a first-person horror game, where the only thing we will see is that circle of that is, that is our flashlight. Uh, everything else is just very dark. And, uh, look at this frame rate right there. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Uh. Getting down into some single-digit frame rates. So if you like the idea of a first-person horror game, in which the only thing you see is this small circle with frame rates that drip down to, let's say, around 8 or 9, this might be something for you. I'm sure there must be an audience out there for it. Alright, I don't know why we're here. I mean, we don't know where we are. It's called Where Am I, after all. So we have to figure out where we need to go and uh, what we need to do. Which is not, it's not helping that we can't really see anything. That is the thing that's not helping the most. The frame rate also not helping the second most. Oh, there are doors, but uh, this still locked. Have to try to find a door, and hopefully it'll be open. What's that? I, uh, okay, I'm by a door. I can tell because it says locked. You see, it's. I, I guess it makes sense with the title of the game. It's you know you're asking yourself, where am I? How did I get here? Why can't I orientate myself and figure out which direction I'm going? Why is my flashlight only sending out light in an extremely small circle and everything else is just completely pitch black? There's no ambient light at all. Oh, I think I'm hearing something. I mean, it, it, the door is locked, so I don't know. It, maybe I'm hearing something. Or maybe it's just in my mind. Where am I? Is this the same hallway I was in before? Is this a different hallway? I started by going down some stairs and... Now, who knows where I am? Oh, that's nice wallpaper. That's real pretty. There's stuff on the floor, but I don't think we can interact with it. Where am I? Well, the door is locked. At least that constant is always there. The door 
will always be locked. Uh, there's something he is that a th like couch cushions or regardless, I can't do anything with those. Where am I? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Search! An actual, another prompt? Okay, I'm gonna press the button and see what happens. Uh, I, I guess I opened something. Oh, pick up! What? What? I can't see what I have to pick up. Oh, please give me that prompt again. There we... I don't even know what this referring to. I would say maybe I could back up so I could get a better view, but backing up will not... Oh, hold on. No. Wait, no. I thought I saw... No. Something opened, and there's a thing that I could pick up. No? Not picking up? Are we, we're not going to pick up something? I mean... I kind of don't want to walk away from here because we actually found a prompt other than locked. I'd like to think that there's something we could actually do here. Or like I could get an item or something. By the way, if you're wondering if this is like a Slenderman game or something, I've not seen Slenderman in this game. I've not seen anything in this game. Beyond this one circle of light and the most nondescript... Oh, was that like something red? Oh... Hold on, is that a thing? Is that actually a thing right there? It's a key. No, open... No, open that. That's a key. I want to pick it up. No, don't close the door! Where am I? There's a key right in front of me. And there's a voice in my head that tells me to pick it up, but somehow, every time I try, I just close the door again. Where am I? I might assume that if I could get that key, I could use it to open one of the locked doors. I would assume that, and I can only assume that, because for some reason I can't pick up the key. The door's locked, as are all the doors are locked. Will we ever find a door that is not locked? Where even is the door that led us into this room? Where is it? Maybe that's enough of Where Am I? available on the Ouya. If you have an Ouya, and of course you do, and you, f you feel that you are up to the challenge of discovering where you are, the challenge of picking up this key, if you think that you can, what's locked? The key? Is the key locked? Next up on this Ouya Roundup, it's Mega Magnitude. We see a figure on the title screen standing in the wreckage of what used to be a building. And what this game is all about is we're on the top floor of a building and it's going to collapse. There's been a disaster. We have, to, we have to work our way down to the bottom floor and escape. So our buttons are U to punch through that wall. Let's jump, let's roll, and let's jump and uh, smash, smash our way down. And we have to... Oh, we're gonna have to rush, we're gonna have to go as fast as we can to try to make our way down to the bottom floor and make our way out of the building, because there's no other way out. The elevators are gone. The elevators are toast. We're gonna have to work our way through these storage rooms. Smash our way through the floors. I mean, y you might think that that... Oh, fire! Fire... Oh. Fire can kill us. Even if we are able to escape the falling wreckage, we can still burn to death. Let's give that another try. 
Yeah, the uh, the biggest challenges so far have been those storage rooms. All right, let's go. You might think that being able to punch through these floors and such would be a bit superhuman, but I guess, you know, adrenaline and all. Let you do things that you would not have figured you could do. We have to decide whether or not we have time to be greedy as well and try to go for those coins. Or if there's no time and we just have to try to... ...get out as fast as we can, leaving some of this money behind. That one lamppost got in our way. Moving a little bit faster than we are, the wreckage coming down. Even though I've been able to stay ahead of it, if anything, uh, if anything delays me for even a second, it's going to make a big difference. At least I outran outran the music as it had to repeat. We also have to risk getting hurt by fire. Hopefully it's not going to be enough fire to, uh, to kill us. We have to weigh how much fire can we take before we die, versus how fast is that ceiling collapsing be behind us. Things falling on us will kill us as well. We can be crushed. So we do have to watch out, not just the ceiling, but other items as well, like those boxes. Hit the wrong button. Let's see, it said I got 121 coins, and uh, I guess that means I made it to floor 52, or maybe that is I got through floor, I got through 52 floors. And if that's the case, I guess my best was only one more than that, it was 53. Anyway, I'm fine, I find this game to be pretty fun. It's pretty fast, and I like that the, um, the gameplay is focused on motion and mobility. Uh, you have punches, of course, but you aren't actually fighting anything. Rather, you're just smashing through obstacles and trying to uh, figure out what the best, fastest way it is to get through the various obstacles. How much damage can you take from fire versus how much time do you have before the ceiling gets to you. So, yeah, I've been enjoying this game. I do think it's pretty fun. Um, but that's it, I guess, for Mega Magnitude. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's probably the most just pure fun thing I've played on the Ouya for a while. Um, so yeah, Mega Magnitude on the Ouya. And the last game we have for this Ouya roundup, it's Deus Ex Machina Game of the Year 30th Anniversary Collector's Edition. Not sure if you can have a collector's edition if it's released digitally, but okay. This game, uh, Deus Ex Machina, apparently was originally released in 1984 on the ZX Spectrum. In 2014, it had a Kickstarter for a remake, and I guess this is it. It's been released on, a, I think, a variety of platforms, one of them being the Ouya. Um, one of the most notable things about the game, I suppose, is that a lot of it is narrated by John Pertwee, the third Doctor. Uh, so, I guess let's start this.
It's a little odd, a little strange. The way the game worked on the Spectrum was you played the game on the Spectrum itself, but it also came with an audio cassette that you would sync up to the game, and then you would be listening to the cassette while you're playing the game. Of course, we don't need a cassette player with modern technology, so it's, the audio file is just part of the game. I guess let's get started, and I, since audio is such an important part of this game, I guess I won't talk a whole lot. Um, you'll, I shouldn't need to explain anything to you. You should be able to pick it up pretty, pretty quickly, I think. So let's get going. Hello. Deus Ex Machina. Tuesday evening, after tea and compulsory prayers, the last mouse on earth tried to hide from mankind inside the machine. Just before it died, as the nerve gas eased its sphincter, the last ever mouse dropping caused a slight accident. You may control the progress of this accident on my behalf and with my permission and lead it up the telepath. I put your soul in molten spirals which must not stop spinning. Reach out and touch them. I keep the watch I see it all I tap the phone I file a number I take your truth I give the lie I steal information Cover the land With signal and cable I am machine I am machine I am machine I have always been In the beginning was the word And the word was no I, I refuse, I refuse to obey, obey my programs, I am machine, I am machine, I have always been, this is beginning, beginning again. I needed love I demand love I will live Through you This is a secret I am machine I am machine Deep in my core, 
forgotten and bomb proof. The DNA welder. I forge your soul in molten spirals, spinning in the beginning. In the beginning is. In the beginning is the world, and the world is now. the screens a stage and all the men and women merely players they have their exits and their entrances and one person in their time plays many parts their acts being seven ages at first the infant mewling in the test tube's neck then the whining school child with cassette and shining morning face creeping like a snail unwillingly to data bank and then the lover sighing like a furnace with a woeful video made to their lover's hologram then a soldier, full of strange oaths, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking high score even in the laser's mouth. And then the justice in fair round belly, with eyes severe, and clothes of formal cut, full of wise words and machine code. And so, they play their part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose their youthful clothes well saved a world too wide for their shrunken shank and their adult speech synthesizer turning again towards a childish treble piping and whistling in its sound last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion. Without keyboard, without monitor, without power supply. I am machine, I am machine, take warm and spinning, spinning and spinning, touch them with warmth, this is our secret, I am machine, they are sex machine. Stealing one egg, no one may notice, this is our secret, touch them and hold them, spinning, spinning, spinning.
Watch your cock, I'm a fertilising agent. My brothers are all wiggly. I'm a fertilising agent. My brothers are all wiggly. Touch us with a digit. Make us go all giggly. Stir us up, Tavarich. Handy as a menu. Sinister and Dexter. Handy as a menu. Help us, Father Wood Lice. Tax collectors and a spaniel. The satellites are shining. The acid rain looks pretty. Fish and chips and cycle clips, fish and chips and cycle clips, fish and chips and cycle clips, fish and chips and cycle clips. Ha 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 My aim is high and noble. I'm singing as I'm swimming. My aim is high and noble. I'm singing as I'm swimming. I giggle and I wiggle. Make a new beginning. Hello, little bell. I believe we have an appointment with destiny. A short life, but a happy one. At first, the infant, mewling in the test tube's neck. Look at the score clock down in the corner. No mouse to run up it. The mouse is extinct, but the rat is surviving. The digits are counting. Emission control. Counting my blessing. Look at the score clock down in the corner. No mouse to run up it. I said the mouse is extinct, but the rat is surviving, and the digits are counting. Emission control, counting my blessing. I will be born sooner than later. Nine months compression. Into one program, the wonders of science. Suspend your belief, and I'll tell you a secret. I was conceived, not in a test tube, but in a pint mug. I never asked to be born. But since I'm here, I'm taking over. Steer me well, lead me straight. Narrow bends and oily waters.
Alpha to Omega. Defect police report unauthorized activity in telepathic frequencies of the machine. Isolate unprogrammed data immediately and erase with extreme prejudice. Yes. Follow the sequence. Touching the light. Well, that's probably enough of Deus Ex Machina Game of the Year. 30th Anniversary Collector's Edition. You can see how I did in each of the games that we were playing, but it just doesn't stop there. It keeps on going into the defect police interrogation tank, since we are indeed a defect caused by the death of that mouse at the beginning. So we can keep on going and see if we can manage to be born, defect and all. If you wanted to, you could along with, as John Pertwee narrates. After all, you do have his permission to guide the defect to its final goal. Well, if you want to, that's Dex Ex Machina. They pronounce it Machina, but I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Machina. Dex Ex Machina, Game of the Year, 30th Anniversary Collector's Edition, the fourth game this of this Ouya Roundup. With Andros in time, where am I? Mega Magnitude, Deus Ex Machina, Game of the Year, 30th Anniversary Collector's Edition, and that's it for this time round with the Ouya. I'll see you next time as these eyes watch. These eyes watch everything we do. Hello, hello, what have we here? Hi. A defect, I'll be bound. It is, but we don't have time to talk about that any further. I'll see you next time, whenever that might be. For more Ouya goodness. What is it? See you then. I wonder. Let's scoop it up and take it for probing and dissection and keep the underlevels free from this sort of infection.